This week on The Gadget Show Web TV, Otis is trying out a new gadget that turns any surface into a speaker. And John's got a first look at the Nokia 5800, plus the latest in gadget tech news. Hello and welcome once again to The Gadget Show studio and of course Web TV. Later on we go on location with Otis where he tests out a new gadget that turns any surface into a speaker. But first here's John with the first look at the Nokia 5800. Nokia have been a bit short of headline grabbing new phones recently so it's good to see they've come up with this, the new 5800 Express Music. It's revolutionary, at least for them, in the sense that it's their first phone with a touch screen. It's got lots of features and they all seem to work pretty well. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got GPS, it's got a three and a half millimeter headphone socket, it's got removable storage, it's got an FM radio with RDS and a 3.2 megapixel camera with autofocus and the ability to shoot video at VGA. A um, Xenon flash would have been nice, not this LED one, but uh, you can't have everything, I guess. It's also uh, pretty light at 109 grams and pretty cheap for a smartphone. You should be able to get it free on most contracts. And I found the battery life was pretty good too. I got about a couple of days without a need for a recharge. It's also one of those Nokia phones that's going to come, at least in the future, with comes with music. This means that you get 12 months of unlimited music downloads from the Nokia Music Store for free, included with the phone. But it's not quite the amazing freebie it seems maybe at first glance, because after 12 months, if you want to be able to continue downloading, then you've got to buy a new Nokia phone. Also, the tracks do come with DRM, which means you can only store them on one computer at a time, and you can't burn audio CDs from them. Also, the software they'd like you to use with it, called Ovi, only works on PCs, not Macs. In fact, I was more taken, actually, by the BBC iPlayer application. It makes uh, excellent use of Nokia's 16x9 screen format and its high 360x640 pixel resolution. They include a handy stand in the box so you can prop your phone up for more comfortable video watching. And you'll probably be impressed also by the quality of the built-in stereo speakers, which are really quite good for ones in a phone. Incidentally, I also quite liked the um, unlocking and locking slider key on the side of the phone. But what about the important touch screen? Well, it's not quite as responsive as the iPhones, although I did find it slightly more responsive than the offerings from LG and Samsung. And I was uh, quite happy dabbing about with my finger on the relatively large icons. I also liked the way the uh, scroll bar at the side worked pretty smoothly. I also liked the different ways you can input text. There's uh, QWERTY keyboards which you can use in the varying sizes. You can use either vertically or in landscape format. And there's also handwriting recognition. I found when I was uh, using the QWERTY keyboard in the landscape mode, I could get faster typing speeds on this, actually considerably faster typing speeds than I could on the iPhone. And for intricate tasks, there's a stylus included in the body of the phone and indeed a plectrum included in the box. Where it falls down particularly, I think, is that Nokia haven't adapted the Series 60 Symbian interface that well for touch. Quite a lot of things seem to require more touches than you'd expect. Setting an alarm, for example, you seem to have to go through quite a few different screens and some of them aren't actually that intuitive. So I think Nokia still have quite a bit of work to do there. Overall, I really quite like the 5800, but I think in future Nokia need to improve the responsiveness of the touchscreen and improve the logistics of their touchscreen interface. On future phones, I'm sure they will. Right, now it's time for the news and Harmonix are launching Rock Band for the PSP and they're calling it Rock Band Unplugged. Now I'm not quite sure how the hardware is going to work on this game. When Nintendo released Guitar Hero for the DS it had a little clip-on peripheral that acted as the guitar in the game and I don't really see Rock Band having lots of tiny little instruments that you use in conjunction with the PSP. But what we do know is that the PSP's Wi-Fi connection is going to be used to access an in-game's music feature. Other games to be included in handheld versions are 
are Disney's Hannah Montana, EA's Tiger Woods and other sporting games, and Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed. And for all of you creative gamers out there, Little Big Planet is also going to make its way to the PSP handset, which means that PS3's major titles are making their way to the PSP market. Now, for those of you who are interested in trying new things, you might be interested to hear that Apple have updated their Safari web browser and released Safari 4. And there are some new improvements that Chrome users might be familiar with. For example, there's something called Top Sites, which brings up a list of your frequently visited sites so you can easily access them without having to type in the address. You can also search through your history using a cover flow format. So instead of looking through a list of URL addresses, you can skim through front pages of websites you've previously visited. Now, performance-wise, Safari 4 loads web pages up to three times faster than Firefox and Internet Explorer 7. And Apple states that Safari 4 is the world's fastest and most innovative web browser for Mac and PC users. So for those of you who are interested in trying it out, a beta version is available for download from the Apple website. Right, now it's time to head out on location with Otis and his Surface speaker. I'm in Bath filming for the main show, but before I left the office, I grabbed something which I think will impress you. Now, we all like to take our music with us, but what if we could turn any hard, flat surface around us into a speaker? That's where this comes in. This is the iMu vibrating speaker, and it works courtesy of a composite material called Turfanil D, which was developed by the US Navy. If you place Turfanil into an aluminium case, wrap a coil around it, then pass an electrical signal through it, it expands and contracts, it resonates. Now, if the electrical signal is music, it will turn that energy into vibration energy. When you place that on a hard, flat surface, it's amplified by that surface and turned into music. Let me show you. This is the iMu on a wooden table. If I hold the speaker in the air, you can't hear anything. Place it on a hard, flat surface, in this case wood, the table turns into a speaker. The same can be said for the base of a bucket, although not as good. And possibly the best sound yet can be gotten from a slab of metal. You may argue with me, you may think the wood sounds better, but it depends on how you like to hear your music. But that's not bad. And its applications for the future, I mean, think about it. If you've got a mobile phone which has this technology in it, all you have to do is place it on your tabletop and you've got a speaker. It may mean you don't have any speakers in your house at all because anything can be turned into a speaker. Well, unfortunately, that's it for this week, but we'll be back at the same time next week with more Web TV and an exclusive report from the BAFTA Video Games Awards. See you then.